Konnichiwa, I'm Alex with Lexico Moto Gymkhana, back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about vision and why vision is so important when it comes to line selection and getting the types of lines that we're looking for in Moto Gymkhana. First, I want to start off with a little anecdote. So a while back, I was watching my very favorite Moto Gymkhana writer, Takayoshi Sakta, the king of Moto Gymkhana. The thing about him is that he has very um, pronounced head turns, right? It's almost like watching a martial artist when you watch him ride Moto Gymkhana because everything he does is very sharp and aggressive and I love it, you know, but at the same time, you could tell he's very relaxed at the same time. It's awesome to watch him ride. Now, what I noticed about his head turns is that he will usually do a big head turn to get pointed in the direction he wants to go. And then he will do a smaller head turn. I call those micro head turns. Okay, so big head turn, micro head turn, sometimes more than one micro head turn. So big head turn, right? It's very robotic. It's almost like a robot locking onto a target or something. When I figured out that he does that, it sent a big message to me that vision is extremely important to Moto Gymkhana in motorcycling in general, but you have to be very intentional and precise about where exactly you are looking. It's not about just looking in the general direction you want to go. Once you get pointed in the general direction, you got to narrow it down even more and adjust your vision. So now that we understand how important it is, Vision is very important for line selection. Where exactly should we be looking? Okay, good question. It has to do with line selection. Now, to do a little recap about line selection from level one Moto Gymkhana techniques, I did a video on line selection called Basic Line Selection. I talked about how we always want to approach a cone nice and wide. And we don't want to get too close to the cone when we first start our turn around the cone. We want to start wide and this is gonna allow us to slow down little by little, shaving off speed as we tighten up around the cone and we kind of apex in a way really close to the cone as we're exiting that, that turn. So start wide and tight. Uh, this is important and has to do a lot with vision because what I started to realize about my writing is that I started to focus too much on the cone itself. I don't want to go to the cone itself. If I go to the cone, then I'm going to run it over. That's not what I want. I want to end up wide when I start my turn. So what I realized is that I was starting to focus too much on the cone instead of on the area next to the cone where I wanted to go. This is extremely important because if you get into that bad habit of looking at the cone, your directional control, remember in the vision video I did in level one, we talked about directional control and about how our vision pulls us to where we're looking. If I'm looking too much at the cone, what's gonna happen, okay, I'm gonna get my little whiteboard out here. If I look too much at the cone, my line is gonna be distorted and I'm going to come in too shallow and I'm gonna start my turn too close to the cone. If I instead focus my vision over here to the area beside the cone, now my directional control is going to pull me wide and I'm going to approach that next cone nice and wide and that's going to help me big time with getting the line that I want. What I started to realize about my writing was that because I was focusing too much on the cone, I was coming in too shallow and I felt like I had to slow down even more to make it tight around that cone on the exit. So I started to over break and I was getting a lot of brake chatter and I was just feeling really, you know, out of control. And the other negative effect of staring at the cone instead of at the area beside the cone is that it was messing up the timing of my flip flop. I was initiating my flip and flopping way too early. And so it was totally throwing off my rhythm. And as I've talked about in the past, rhythm and flow is very important in Moto Gymkhana. So quick recap. We want to start our turns nice and wide. So we need to be focusing on the area with our vision on the area beside the cone, not looking directly at the cone. This is a beginner mistake that I made. And as I started to focus my vision where I'm supposed to, my rhythm and flow and my line started to get a lot better. So 
Watch the good writers, as I always tell you guys. Go watch some good writers. Look at their head turns. Look at the timing of it. Where exactly are they looking and how is it affecting their line and their, their rhythm and flow? Uh, I hope that this video got you guys thinking about um, these things and I hope that it will help you in your writing. I'll see you guys at the next episode. I got two more videos planned for level two. Then I'm going to take a little bit of a break to prepare level three. But I got two more really, really important videos coming up. It's going to be very, very important. Finally going to cover breaking and I'm going to cover um, um, the handlebar inputs and the timing of everything going around in a U-turn. So it's going to be very big videos. I'm so excited to get this done. Till the next video, arigato and peace.